the team of folks that are behind the first AEHF mission are a great, a great set of Americans who have dedicated many years of their life to, to put this satellite in orbit. We've got folks that are working on this program all across the nation. It's a dedicated set of great Americans that are out to do one thing, and that's deliver on-orbit capability for our nation. And to be a part of that is just is a wonderful thing. It gets me up in the morning and it keeps me fired up all day long. And no matter how long the day is, at the end of the day, you know that the reason you're doing that is for the folks that are going to be users of this system. And you know that this system is going to work and operate for many, many years long after we're in the program office. So being able to deliver that is just a wonderful feeling and I'm super proud to be a part of the program. Now, this is uh, the, the event we've been waiting for, for for the last six years since I've been here. Uh, it's a very exciting time for us and uh, this, is, this is what we're all about, is launching capability for the warfighters. Just after midnight, a C-5 Galaxy from Travis Air Force Base arrives at Moffett Field, California, as the first satellite in the Advanced Extremely High Frequency Program is prepped for transfer. What we're going to do is we're going we're to hook up to this trailer with a tractor and then we're going to pull it outside. And then this duct work here is for the airflow. Okay, and then we have a, an air conditioning unit uh, that's going to be hooked up into the back. There's a hitch in the back here. We'll tow it behind it, and then the air ducts will be connected to it. The satellite has to be under pressure. It can't have any contaminations in there. We'll all be in communication with each other when we pull the trailer out. And there'll be four of us positioned, one guy in front, and then back it up to the trailer. The AEHF system is the successor to the five-satellite Milstar constellation and will provide significantly improved global, highly secure, protected, survivable communications for the warfighter. So working with the military has really brought home who it is that we are creating the satellite for. I had a great working relationship with the captain over here and uh, I found out one day she was deploying. And so to know that she's over in the desert, she's on the ground, and that the communication systems that we're going to be offering within the next two years is going to help her and other people in her situation, it really brings everything into focus. And that's part of it, the fact that I haven't deployed, uh, knowing that I am part of something that is going to help the people that are deployed and knowing that the, uh, the warfighter will be using uh, AHF on a daily basis once it's operational, um, it's, it, it makes me proud and uh, I'm just excited to see it get up in the air. We're here at Moffett Field in Mountain View, California as the advanced extremely high frequency satellite is loaded onto the C-5 headed to the East Coast to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. This is very near and dear to my heart and I uh, spent a lot of late nights and weekends and blood, sweat and tears in this satellite. It, it's an amazing feeling to watch it come out of that airlock and uh, knowing that um, we are putting it on this C-5 and, and taking it where it belongs, uh, in space, getting it out to the Cape, getting it on a rocket and launching it. I mean, there's just nothing better to be a part of. Uh, this is amazing. Well, just to get the satellite built was a nine-year effort of a large team of uh, both military, uh, the government side, as well as, of course, the, the industry team of Lockheed and Northrop Grumman and all of their partners. A uh, huge amount of effort getting here. The logistics of just getting here today have been massive with everything from the C-5 and getting its crews here to uh, dozens of people to get the, the satellite out of the factory, delivered here, and then loaded up. And to finally see us ship it down to the Cape and um, to you know, all the activities that we've done over the last several months getting ready out the Cape and then to have launch day come. It's going to be very exciting. As the C-5 arrives here at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, the AEHF satellite transfers in its shipping container to the processing facility in preparation for launch. After a successful launch of the first AEHF satellite, we'll spend approximately 90 days getting to our on-orbit, our test location on orbit. After we get to that orbit, we'll begin the payload activation and the checkout to make sure everything's working the way we want it to, and we'll do the calibration mission to make sure that the satellite's performing the way we wanted to, and then we will go through another maneuver of the spacecraft to put it in its operational orbit location, and then we will be able to turn that in a position to turn that over to our combatant commanders for their use. I'm going to be out in Florida, I'm going to be on console in Hangar AE, I'm going to be able to hear them say, go Atlas, go advance DHF, and we're all going to run outside and watch it go up into space. I'm very, very proud of, of the folks that are working on this program. They are working extremely hard, long hours, seven days a week, 
at all parts of the all parts of the country and making sure that this program comes together and that we're able to get the satellite successfully launched and activated and turned over and put into operation. Welcome to this special edition of Inside SMC. We're here at the Atlas V launch pad at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, as the AEHF team goes through their final checkouts in preparation for launch of the Air Force's first advanced extremely high frequency satellite. I think at the end of the day, we all recognize that, you know, what the system is used for. It's used to help protect uh, mothers, fathers, uh, sons and daughters. Uh, spouses that are out in harm's way today in uh, many engagements around the world. AEHF is a joint military satellite communication system that will provide survivable, global, secure, protected, and jam resistant communications for high priority military ground, sea, and air assets to the U.S. government as well as international partners, including the United Kingdom the Netherlands, and Canada. Having that team together for all this time, I think, is, is really one of the main reasons why we're ready with this satellite and why, uh, why we've been so successful. Building upon the success of the current five-satellite Millstar constellation, AEHF will provide 10 times greater capacity and offer higher channel data rates. But really, when you think about it, we're deploying something that's, that, that takes years to get up there and get into service. And so what I like to emphasize is that it, you know, it certainly would help, uh, would help me and, and the troops that serve for me right now when we're deploying. But really, this is the next generation of MIL SATCOM. So it's going to help my kids when, when they're wearing the uniform. And, and so really, I can't think of anything more altruistic than improving your kids' chances of success if they ever get into a, into a battle. Three, two. An Atlas V launches from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, carrying the Air Force's first AEHF satellite into orbit. The launch is always, that's the big pucker time. It's, the, it's the, the riskiest part of any satellite's life is when it's launching. A sense of relief and also a sense of anticipation because once we get payload separation, that's when the work really begins for the spacecraft team. And uh, we, we've got people out at Shriver Air Force Base ready to, ready to take command and control of the satellite and begin that journey up to its final operational orbit and begin the testing. Starting with the maiden launch, AEHF will provide near-global 24-hour coverage for a wide array of warfighter applications, including broadcasting, data networking, voice teleconferencing, and strategic report back. During the first Gulf War, they had to uh, stop every time they did a maneuver and put up a 50-foot antenna to get line of sight with the unit that was next to them before the next unit moved, and that takes a lot of time. So at navigating their way through the desert was a bit of a laborious task. Now with AEHF, you also have additional coverage, and you've got a lot more antennas and beams and downlinks to, to, to work with. So you don't have a contention for resources where a higher priority user can pull a beam off of your need over to their need and leave you without coverage. So AHF will provide that additional coverage. The system is compatible with existing protected terminals and will support future terminals as they are deployed. The next two satellites in the series are expected to launch in 2011 and 2012. Hi and welcome to this edition of Inside SMC. The first satellite in the Advanced Extremely High Frequency Program launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. And we're here now at Los Angeles Air Force Base and joining me is Katie Parks with the program. Hi, Hi. Katie, how are Hi. you? Hi Chris, I'm doing well, how are you? Good. Talk a little bit about your position and your role with the program. Um, I'm the Chief of the International Partners Office within AEHF. Um, that means that I am the liaison with the three countries that partner with us on the system. That's Canada, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. One of the primary reasons why we have partners is because they provide um, allies, additional allies, additional ways to be interoperable with their warfighters and our warfighters out in the field. So there's a lot of benefit both ways on that. What it really comes down to is it'll allow us to build coalition networks during coalition operations, during future combat operations that will significantly increase the amount of cooperation we're able to do between ourselves and these key allies. This uh, program uh, gives us the opportunity uh, 
to strengthen our relationship. Uh, in addition to that, it also provides a, a critically needed protected communication capabilities for each of these countries that they'll be able to use even if they're not in coalition operations uh, with the United States, they'll be able to use in their own operations. Uh, doing a project like this, starting from requirements until the uh, final uh, realization of that, also gives us a spin-off in better relationship. From both perspectives, I would say we are very happy to, uh, to uh, be part in this program. What, if any, program are the international partners using today? Um, well, currently the international partners don't have a protected satellite communications capability the way that AHF will provide them with. Um, most of them, for the most part, are using commercial SATCOM. There's a few exceptions, but none of it is protected in the same way that AHF is going to provide, which means that it's robust, unlikely to be compromised by other people, and it's, it's a really strong communications capability. Satellites are getting more and more complicated, more and more expensive, so we're going to have to share and start looking at that together, which is this program's an ideal way of doing it. It's an essential program that we need uh, in support of our deployed ops, and so we look very much forward to that and are very, very satisfied and encouraged with the, uh, the work uh, working with the Americans. I think it's been it worked out extremely well. Were representatives from each of the countries able to make it out to Cape Canaveral for the actual launch? Yes, they were, and it was actually very exciting. Um, they were excited, the, the industry partners were excited, we were excited that they were all able to come out there. We were even able to get them involved in the rollout of the satellite from the vertical integration facility out to the launch pad. The ones who were in the military were in their foreign military uniforms, which was kind of neat. On the day of launch, they were able to join us with the rest of the invited guests and watch launch. Um, it was great. It was culmination of years, decades in some case, of uh, lots of hard work. And they were, they were great to feel the rumble of the rocket and the, watch, the, watch the light going up into the sky as our, our satellite went to space.